is attracting to nominate numbers. A denominant number is a number that's used with a unit of measurement. For example, five miles, six hours, 5,000 pounds. Much of our work with numbers in our everyday lives involves denominant numbers. In working with the denominant numbers, we will need to know the different conversions to change back and forth from one unit to another. The conversions that we'll be working with for length are 12 inches equal to one foot, three feet equal to one yard, and 5,280 feet equals to one mile. These are measurements that you probably already know, but if there are any of these that you don't, you need to learn them. You also need to make sure you're comfortable with the abbreviations. The measurements of capacity that we'll be working with are eight ounces equals to one cup, two cups equals to one pint, two pints equal to one quart, and four quarts equals one gallon. With time, the units of measurement that we'll be using are 60 seconds equals one minute, 60 minutes equals one hour, 24 hours equals to one day, seven days equals one week, 365 days equals one year. With weight, we'll use the fact that 16 ounces equals one pound and 2,000 pounds equals one ton. pack that I've just shown you are very important. We'll be using them throughout the course. Hopefully these are facts that you all know, but if there's any fact that I put up that you do not know, you definitely need to learn it now. If you didn't copy these facts down, rewind the tape and go back and copy the facts. They will be used throughout the course. We'd like to begin by adding denominant numbers. And first of all, we're going to add some denominant numbers that involve length. We'll add 5 feet 7 inches to 4 feet 3 inches. So all we have to do is add our like units together. We add our 3 and 7 and get 10 inches and add our 4 and 5 and get 9 feet. So our answer is 9 feet 10 inches. Let's look at another example. This time we're working with yards and feet. If I had one yard and one foot, I'm going to add it to four yards and two feet. Again, I have my feet lined up together and I have my yards lined up together. Well, when I add my 2 and my 1, I get 3 feet. And when I add my 4 and my 1, I get 5 yards. Now, if you remember, 3 feet equals to a yard. So since we have enough feet here to give us a whole yard, we don't want to leave our answer like this. In fact, it would be wrong if we left it this way. What we'd like to do is take this 3 feet and change that to one yard and put that over here with the five yards that we already have. So our answer to that addition problem would be six yards. Let's look at another example. This time, we're adding miles and feet. When we add our 
4,500 feet to 3,000 feet, we end up with 7,500 feet or 7,500 feet. Our two miles and our four miles will give us six miles. Now this would be our answer unless we have enough feet to change those feet into some miles. So let's think about the conversion fact that relates feet to miles. If you'll remember, one mile is equal to 5,280 feet. And we certainly have more than 5,280 feet. Let's take 5,280 feet away from this. We did that. Zero from zero would leave zero. When we can't subtract eight from zero, so we'd borrow one from the five, which would leave us with a four. And the, we put the one that we borrowed over here. That would give us the 10. Eight from 10 leaves two. Two from four leaves two. And five from seven leaves two. And so we'd have 2,220 feet left. So the 5,280 that we took away was one mile. So what we'd want to do is take that one mile and put it over here with the six miles that we already had. So what would happen is our answer would end up being seven miles, 2,220 feet. So we took the 5,280 feet away from the 7,500 feet, and that was a mile. We added that mile to the six miles that we already had, which gave us seven miles, and we have left 2,220 feet. And we want to be sure that our 2,220 was always less than this conversion fact up here. If we had more than 5,280 feet left, then we'd need to send another mile over there with the six miles. Now let's work with an addition problem that involves capacity, our liquid measurement. We have two gallons, three quarts, and we want to add that to one gallon, three quarts. So if we add our quarts together, we end up with six quarts. We add our gallons together, we end up with three gallons. So we have three gallons and six quarts. Again, that would be our answer as long as we don't have enough quarts to give us any more gallons. Well, if we think about our conversion fact that tells us how many quarts it takes to make a gallon, hopefully you'd remember that it takes four quarts to equal to a gallon. And since we have more than four quarts here, we can carry a quart over there, carry a gallon over there to give us more gallons. So let's do that. Let's take our four quarts away and that would leave us with two quarts. And the four that we're going to take away, this would be our one gallon. So if we take that one gallon and put it over here with our three gallons, we'll end up with four gallons, two quarts.